Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The psalmist says, Oh, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Oh, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. And he said, don't you stop there. You're going to keep on reading. Go find that passage of scripture. Where am I at, somebody? I'm at Psalm 103. And, and then he says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who heals all your diseases. Come on, Come on somebody say, he heals all your diseases. Mm -hmm. Who redeems your life from destruction. Everybody say from destruction. from destruction. And then watch this one. This is the one I love the most. Right, and right. then this day, uh, uh, the 8th, I mean, excuse me, August the 3rd, 19, oh, 2014. Come on, mine. He says, <laughs> he says in that verse part four, uh, verse four part A, B, he says, who crowns you. Somebody say crowns you. crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercy, loving kindness and tender mercy. See, Amen. see now. Now, I was always taught you have to know the audience that you are speaking to. And so I know I'm in an audience of some folks that didn't play checkers before. And, you know, when you didn't got all the, uh, the other man's checkers off of the table, you got your check and you running down and when you get to the other side they come back and crown you come on somebody and, and, and God God has crowned us with loving kindness and tender mercy somebody say loving kindness and tender mercy tender mercy see the reason that we are still alive today is because of his loving kindness when he went when he went up on the cross and, and then his blood uh, was shed for the remission of our sins you know so when he talk about his tender mercy because I don't know about y'all I, I, I should be dead sleeping in my grave Oh, but God made death do what? Behave. And then all the bad stuff I done done in my life, I need, if I didn't go get dead, I should be in the jail never to get out again. Oh, but thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My name is Anthony Mark McCoy. Simply call me Mark. I am Pastor Willie B. McCoy's baby boy. Amen. Baby boy. I'm the I'm the baby boy. Yeah, the little one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm the little one. I'm the little one. I'm the little one. Today, today, uh, today he says he wants us to turn to uh, Samuel chapter 16. First Samuel chapter 16. First Samuel chapter 16. Yeah, yeah, I want you to hear this text. We're talking about my theme for this whole entire year has been crowns. God crowning, God being the king of kings. Oh, y'all didn't hear me. I said God being the king of kings and the Lord of lords. So it's some lords and some kings that God is king and lord of. Oh, see, y'all, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on here. Let me get something straight. Let me get something straight. Now, they taught me in school to know your audience. So, so, so I'm, I'm used to preaching to anybody. I preach the horns off a of billy goat. It don't make me no difference. Okay? So, 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 so you, you, you got to understand, I'm recording this. I don't know if Barbara recorded. Y'all might have to come back and listen to this later because I'm going to be rolling, all right? I, I, don't play, I don't play when it comes to God's word. And matter of fact, I don't have to take too many breaths. Only thing I have to worry about if I start laughing, something might come out my mouth. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Can I get a yeah, yeah, or amen? Because somebody know what I'm talking about up in here. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so, so we in 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel is considered the uh, beginning of the kingdom of God. It is the kingdom book. Uh, there was no kingdom in God before Samuel. Samuel was the one that anointed Saul because the, the children of Israel desired a king. They didn't want a theocracy no more. They wanted a monarch. Uh, a monarch. 
And they, they wanted the a monarch. So this is the book where the kings get started. All right. And where we are in the 16th chapter, the first king, that big, tall, beautiful and handsome, dark fellow named Samuel, I mean, mean named uh, Saul, ha- ha- has messed up and the anointing of God has been removed from him. And, and the prophet, the prophet, if you will, who anointed him was Samuel. And I could go into Samuel's story, but we're we just going to stay right there. And Samuel, being a prophet who had anointed the first king of Israel, was now in mourning because God then told him something. Say, somebody say, God tells you things. God tells you things. And when he tells you, it makes you moan because you ain't ready for this stuff. They, the, 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 the movie say, uh, you can't have handle the truth. I mean, when God tells you a truth that makes you moan, you get, when he tells you, you don't, you don't want to, oh, no, God, no, let this, no, no, because, you know, y'all, y'all, y'all got to be with me. Now, Jesus himself, when he heard that he had to take that bitter cup, he said, oh, Lord, please let this thing pass me by. But he understood, not my will, but thy will be done. Stay with me now. Stay with me now. Samuel, starting at verse 1, chapter 16, 1 Samuel, it says this. Now the Lord said to Samuel, how long will you mourn for Saul, seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel? Fill your horn with oil and go, and I will send you to Jesse's, uh, the, the, what is, how you say that, the, the Bethlehemite. For I have provided myself a king among his sons. I have provided myself a king among his sons. I'm going to go down some further. I just got to take a breath and get this water in me or something, you know. Mm-mm-mm. So we go on, we go on. And he says, and Samuel said, verse 2, how, how can I go if Saul hears it? He will kill me. Uh, the Holy Spirit want me to stop right there and just talk about it for a minute. Sometimes when God tells us something, it's so disturbing that it makes other folks want to kill us. Come on, somebody. And if, if, if don't nobody else want to kill us, it's the devil himself. I'm just going on what I'm saying. Y'all didn't talk to y'all children, y'all grandchildren, y'all, y'all uh, uh, sons and y'all daughters and told them something. And they got so mad. Oh, Lord. Mm, you had to tell him. Go on now. He says, he says, but the Lord said, take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Then invite Jesse to the sacrifice and I will show you what you shall do. You shall anoint for me the one I name you. Verse 4, Samuel did what the Lord said. Everybody say obedience is better than sacrifice. Oh, Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He said he did what the Lord told him to do, and he went to Bethlehem. Uh, And and, and, and it says, "And and the elders of the town trembled at his coming and said, do you come in peace? It's something else when a prophet come to town. Joker's got a, wait a minute, you come to, come to, come on, you ain't finna do no ham, hell and damnation on you. Tell, we need a word of encouragement. We need, are you coming in peace? I'm here in peace, y'all, today. Because I'm, I'm finna blow y'all mind. Y'all, y'all, I'm, oh, Lord Jesus. <laughs> he goes on and he says in verse 6, so, no, no, verse, verse 5, and he says, peaceable, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. Then he concentrated Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. Verse 6, so it was when they came, they looked at Elab and said, Surely the Lord's anointing is before him. Elab was the oldest boy. He was big, tall, and handsome. You know, you know, you know how folks are. They like a tall, dark, and handsome fella. Come on, ladies, say amen. amen. <laughs> hey, Slim, we got it going on now. <laughs> so he says, he says in verse seven, and this is my key verse. He says, "But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look at his appearance." 
or his physical stature because I have refused him. See, you got too many folks trying to get your blessing. Ooh. <laughs> and the Lord said, no, dog, this ain't for you. That's for her. That's for him. And so he says, and the Lord said, I refused him. For the Lord, it says, does not see a man as man sees. Read that one again. He says, for the Lord does not see as man sees. For the Lord looks at the outward appearance. Uh oh For the man looks at the outward appearance. Oh, let me make sure I said it right. Get down because I got to see. Hold on, y'all. Watch this, y'all. I got to straighten these bifocals up. Okay. For the Lord does not see as man sees. For man looks at the outward appearance. Everybody say, but the Lord. But the Lord looks at the heart. Looks at the heart. Here is my question that we're going to raise for this text. Why are you still here? Amen. Mm -mm. Don't be trying to answer this. Not yet. <laughs> the question is, why are we still here? Why are we still here? This is, as I said, August 8th, 2014. August. Didn't I say August? Oh, third. Oh, Excuse me. I keep going to eight because the eight is on me. August. Yo, I'm, fin I'm finna. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. August 3rd, 2014. I'm going to start with the year first. The number is 14. Everybody say 14. 14. What's 2 times 7? 14. Oh, come on. That's easy math. Now, two, add that. And what is 7? A complete number. And, and 7 in the, in, the, in the spirit of God is a complete number. He says, I'm giving you a double portion this year of completeness. Hallelujah. Mm, touch your neighbor. Say neighbor. Man. We talking a double portion. We, a double portion. we are in 2014 because we are getting ready. Before this year is out, you can bank on this. We're going to receive a double portion of what God has been reserving up in the heavens for us all our lives. It don't matter how young you are. It don't matter how old you are. You're still here and he got you here for a reason. And the first thing that God loves to do is to bless somebody. Say, God bless. God bless. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Then, 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 then I look at eight and three. Lord said when I was driving over, he says, now you know eight is new beginnings. I said, ooh, so you getting ready to do a new thing? You trying to tell me we're in a new beginning? Things are getting ready to shift? You mean to tell me all this shaking and stuff that has been going on up until this point? I don't know about y'all. I'm going to get to my testimony. But if you like me, you've been shaking up this year. It, it's been some stuff. That jumped on you. It's been some stuff that jumped on your family members. It's been some stuff that then jumped on your city. It's been some stuff that then jumped on this world. And you sitting there going, Lord, what is this all about? But this is the eighth month of the double portion of years. So there's a new thing getting ready to happen. And then in addition, it's the third. It's the third. That that's the number of the Trinity. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. <laughs> now, now, I got another thing about this day. It's the day for my mama's birthday. <laughs> but, but, <laughs> but where I'm going with this, where I'm going with this, is that this is the beginning of something new yes. that is under the power of God, and you finna get a double portion. The text says, the text says that the Lord said to Samuel, how long will you mourn for Saul? Now, many of us have heard said this out of our own mouths, and we've heard other people say it. I want it to be like it used to be. I want that good old-fashioned church. 
I, I, I want the preacher to preach like he used to preach. I want the choir to sing like they used to sing. Well, I'm here to tell you something. God is sitting here asking the question, how long you going to mourn for that old dead stuff? Ooh, how long you going to mourn for them old traditions? How long you going to mourn? Don't you understand? He says, I have rejected that. God has moved on from that old stuff, and we need to move forward. And it don't matter how old we are. I'm going to say that one more time. God has moved on from that old mess. Y'all, come on now. Y'all know how that old mess was. It wasn't all that good. And we still trying to be stuck in that old stuff. Mm-hmm. He says now, I rejected him from reigning over Israel. I got a new king. That's what he's saying. I, that old stuff gone away. And then he says, he says, Samuel, you know, Samuel being real. God, you know, me and you've been talking. You know, me and you just like this, God. You know, we rap all the time. You telling me stuff. I tell you stuff. You know, we be praying and interceding and going, you know, all. You know, I, uh, but, you know, Saul going to try to kill me. <laughs> I don't know if I want to do this. And the Lord said, okay, baby, let me tell you how to do it. See, see, that's the thing a lot of us don't understand. When God gives us a command to do something, he's given us the ability to execute it. Right. Somebody say execute. Execute. See, see, see. You are still here. And you can write this one down. Because he ain't finished with you yet. Amen. Oh, oh, see, 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 y'all, 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 see, you, you should have got happy. You should have got happy. You say, but, dog, I, Lord, I, I can't teach like I used to. I can't cook like I used to. I can't sing like I used to. I can't walk like I used to. I sure ain't going to do no running. If anybody see me running, y'all better run too because something must be after me. <laughs> you know, but, but all of that stuff is going on in your mind. You get to saying, I'm too old. I can't do this. I can't do that. Y'all don't know. That's the distraction of Satan himself. Trying to get you off of your destiny. Yeah. Trying to get you away from God's purpose and plan for your life. Yeah, Come on. That's why you're still here. Yeah. And then he goes on and he says, okay, this is what I want you to do, Sam. Sam, you said, okay, Lord, I'm going to do what you say I'm going to do. And time he show up in the town, the folks, like, what you here for? <laughs> y'all know how folks, when they walk in, in, in the door, y'all don't yeah, know them. Y'all look up, y'all <laughs> oh, y'all heads aren't crooked. And then you be out in the window peeking out. You know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> you want to, you know. And that's how these folks was. And they want to know that you come in peace. And he told me, yeah, I came in peace. I came to do a sacrifice. I came to do some consecration and for Jesse and his sons. And then he gets ready to do it. And if, if I had time, I'd talk about how Jesse just didn't understand. See, I don't know about y'all, we say, say this thing in my family, I'm my mama's favorite. <laughs> I can say that, but if I ask Barbara, what Barbara gonna say? I'm my mama's favorite. <laughs> because, because my mama knew how to treat all seven of her children mm. as favorites. Right. Jesse didn't have that kind of economy in his mind. He had some that he favored and some that he didn't. Matter of fact, the one that he favored, he was this fella, he was the oldest son, but the little younger one, he had him out in the field because he's stupid, he ain't a little ruddy old mm -hmm. redhead joker. Go on. Get on away from me, go take care of the sheep. But when it comes down to it, that's who God. Oh, see, y'all missed that. Right. Y'all missed that one. Amen. That's who God wanted to be king. He was the one that mom and daddy rejected. He was the one that everybody talked about. He was an outsider. He wasn't in the in crowd. Oh, somebody got to understand what I'm talking about. You didn't got a little older. Y'all still got clicks up in here. Y'all know y'all got some gossiping friends and some more. You I don't want to deal with them. And then you got some other me looking. You know. 
he was an outsider. And the prophet said to him, look at me. I want you to hear me. I want you to hear me well. The Lord, verse 7, said to Samuel, don't look at his appearance or his physical stature because I have refused him. For the Lord does not see as man sees, for man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord's looking at the heart. Everybody say he looking. He looking. See, he ain't looking at your body. He ain't looking at your physical capabilities. He looking at your heart. He wants to know what's going on in your heart. Matter of fact, he already know what's going on in your heart. He just wants you to execute what's going on in your heart. Yeah. This year, this year, this year, this is my testimony. I'm a youngster. I just turned 53 on the 21st Hallelujah. of July. <laughs> That's grace and the Trinity for me. And seven is a complete... Come on, y'all, y'all. <laughs> and I'm born on the 21st day, so I get a triple portion. Y'all don't understand it. Y'all ain't understand it. Y'all ain't understanding what I'm saying. See, see what she got, she gave me a triple portion. Oh, you all, oh, come on now. Come on now. Come on now. And, 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 and I was sick. My sickness started on the 7th of July. I went in the hospital on the 10th of July. I didn't get out the hospital till the 14th of July. For all practical purpose, Mama and Barbara, I did not tell y'all this. I was near death. I just told y'all to pray. I was completely dehydrated. I rejected some medicines that had caused me to have sores or blisters or rash from the, my top bottom of my feet to the top of my head. I was running 103 fever, diarrhea, and vomiting. And they said, oh, he, we don't know what he got. Called in the specialist. So they calmed down that reaction to the meds. And I told them, y'all got to get me out of here because y'all about to kill me. They got me out the hospital. I get out the hospital. I went from the 14th to the 27th of this month with that fever, that diarrhea, and that doggone vomiting. And guess what it was? I see, I wish I had a big mama around like I used to, or a little mama, and I could say, big mama, little mama, I ain't feeling good, you know. Well, baby, sound like you got strep throat. Oh, no. <laughs> they didn't look at every office in my body and never looked down my throat. I went 20 days with strep throat in July in Alabama. Y'all don't hear me. I say, Lord, what's going on, Lord? Had one of my boys call me while I'm sick in the hospital and say to me, man, what you done did wrong? I say, hold on, dog. You trying to treat me like Job. You supposed to be praying for me, not asking me what I done wrong. And I said, okay, Lord, you need to explain to me why I'm still here. You need to explain to me why I'm going through all of this. I need to understand. He said, well, baby, Slewfoot came by the heaven the other day, wagging his red tail and his pointy little ears, <laughs> talking about, you know, and you've been blessing them, of course. Look at that little one down there. He hit Mark McCoy. He look at him. He just so blessed. He got a beautiful wife. He got four beautiful children. Four beautiful grandchildren, his mama and his dad is still living, and all his siblings. You just been blessing him. And now let, let me get my hands on him. And I bet you he gonna cuss you out. But what the Lord taught me, 
and what I want to share with you. Because each and every one of us go through some suffering. Amen. Each one of us got some pains. Amen. Each one of us wake up in the morning and said, oh, Lord, can I just turn right back over? What the Lord wants us to understand is that you and I must keep his word. And no matter what happened, we should never deny him. Amen. 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 Keep his word. And don't deny him. And in order to keep his word, you got to study his word. In order to keep his word, you got to read his word. In order to keep his word, you got to memorize his word. In order to keep his word, you got to be the living word yourself. Amen. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. It don't matter how old you are. It don't matter how young you are. If they know, the world know you a child of the king, let's see what she going to do with this one. They be looking. What what, what he going to do? You know, you know when somebody make you mad? Like, oh, what he going to do? He going to cuss him out, Slim? <laughs> you know, and, you know, and then, oh, don't let your own grandkids be watching. <laughs> Oh, you know, and they tell all, go, mama, I was with granny, and you know, granny, I didn't even know granny knew how to throw up no fangs. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Your purpose right now is to be a living witness. Right. Your purpose, Amen. I'm standing here, I am a walking miracle. Hallelujah. Oh, see, see, and I heard you say it earlier. Hallelujah. I said, you got to understand. You need to, when you get up in the morning, you need to walk over to the mirror and you say, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. And then look at yourself a little closer and say, mm, 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 God, you a bad shut your mouth. Come on, somebody. <laughs> You created me, you designed me, you put me here for this time, for this season, for right now. You, you, hey, I couldn't have planned this. You had to plan this, and you got a purpose. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Amen. So on my birthday, I'm going to birthday. Yeah. 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 I wanted to fix up some stuff in the house. I go to Home Depot. I went and got me some mulch, some plants, some kill the wasps. And I got my son, Dre, 34, 35 years old, gonna come over and do my yard and all that kind of stuff for me. So I go get the material about seven o'clock in the morning because you know we can't sleep late. Oh, <laughs> You know, we beat the birds up. You know, why ain't y'all chirping yet? <laughs> you know, son be like trying to, uh, we up. That's how it is. And, and so I'm there and I'm, I done got my stuff. and I'm sick, y'all. I ain't got no business lifting 15, 16 bags of mulch. I'm sick. So I walk, push my buggy out, big old van, and I see this young man walking across the, across the road, coming across the parking lot. I looked at him. I said, thank you, Jesus. A ram in the bush. Hallelujah. A ram in the bush. I said, hey, hey, man, hey, man, you want to make, hey, put this stuff in my car for me, and I'll give you $5. He said, all right, all right, man. So he sweated and got all my bags in there. And, and then when I pulled out my money, I gave him a 10. He said, oh, man. I said, hey, dog, let me talk to you. My name is Mark McCoy. What's your name? He says, my name's so-and-so and so and so I said, check this out, man. What you on? He said, I ain't on nothing. I didn't ask you if you was drunk right now. I say, what, what's, what got you? He said, oh, man. And, you know, I'm looking at him, dead in his eye, looking at him. I'm all the way into his heart now. He said, I'm strung out on crack. I said, dog, I don't know you. You don't know me. Here's my number. Call me when you're ready to get off crack. Got in my truck. Went on to the crib. Got on Facebook. I'm a Facebook fanatic. 
y'all pray for this boy here, crackhead, and he going to rehab real soon. Oh, y'all to him. <laughs> <laughs> that that was he going to rehab real soon. So he calls me the next day. He says, Hey, 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 hey.